Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and welcome back to another chemistry video. In this video, we're going to be learning about how to classify matter into elements, compounds, and mixtures. If you're new here, this is the place for high school chemistry, be it honors chemistry first year or AP chemistry. So take a look around. Uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're so inclined. Well, as we said, matter can be classified into three major types, elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now, when we say elements, these are the basic building blocks of matter. Elements are the simplest form of matter, and in an element, you only have one type of atom. And we know that there are only 90 elements that exist in all of nature in the world, and they're listed on the periodic table of the elements. And so if you're taking a chemistry class right now, there's a good chance that there's a, a chart or a periodic table on the wall, and that's displayed very prominently. And that's because those 90 elements are the basis for everything else that we study in chemistry. Now, you might look at your periodic table and say, well, hang on a second, there are more than 90. There actually seem to be maybe about 118 elements on the periodic table. So what's going on with that? Well, the fact is there are another 28 elements that don't actually exist in nature, and they're produced synthetically. They're actually produced in laboratories. And so that's why I don't have those counted as being in nature, although they certainly do exist as well. Now, like we said, since elements are the simplest form of matter, we cannot separate them into anything simpler. If we have a sample of pure oxygen gas, for example, that's just oxygen molecules, basically, or carbon. It's just carbon atoms. You can't separate that into anything simpler. Now, once we go into something a bit more complex, we have compounds. Compounds are when we have fused together two or more elements. And there are a lot of chemical compounds that you're very familiar with. Water might be one of the most common. Now, it is possible to separate compounds down into their component elements. But the only way to do that is by means of a chemical reaction. And so, for example, in the case of water, you'd have to take some electricity and pass that through the water by means of what's called electrolysis. We talked about that in an earlier video. So it is possible to separate it, but only with a chemical reaction. Here are some common examples of, of compounds. Sugar, we talked about water, salt, uh, aspirin. Most drugs, caffeine, uh, you've heard it like we have aspirin here, Tylenol, uh, pain relievers, any kind of drug that you can think of is probably going to be a compound, most likely. Now, how can you tell compounds apart from elements? Well, compounds have a chemical formula, and that chemical formula is going to consist of two or more elements. For example, water has the formula H2O, which means it has two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. That's what the H2O stands for. Or salt is NaCl. The Na is for the sodium. The Cl is for the chloride part of that. Uh, any compound is going to have a chemical formula associated with it. Now, if we take compounds and elements collectively, these are considered to be pure substances or just substances for short. And so we have elements and we have compounds. Then we have mixtures. Now, mixtures are a physical blending of two or more substances. Now, notice a compound that we talked about earlier, compounds are chemically fused together, which means you can only separate them chemically. Well, in the case of a mixture, since they're physically blended together, we can separate them physically as well. We can separate them by all kinds of physical means, which we'll talk about here shortly. Now, there are two major types of mixtures. We have homogeneous mixtures uh, and heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures have a uniform composition all the way throughout. So think about Kool-Aid, for example. If you have a jug of Kool-Aid and you drink that Kool-Aid at the top of the jug, it should have the same flavor as the Kool-Aid at the bottom of the jug. It has a uniform composition all the way through, as opposed to heterogeneous mixtures, which have different parts. You can actually see the different parts of a heterogeneous mixture with the naked eye. 
And those different parts are called phases. Phases. And, and so, for example, a salad is a good example of a heterogeneous mixture. You can see different phases. One phase might be the lettuce, one phase might be the tomatoes, one phase might be the cucumbers, and so forth. So we have homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. Now, more commonly, we call homogeneous mixtures solutions. You've heard this word before. For example, if you wear contact lenses, you might uh, use contact solution for your lenses, right? It's a homogeneous mixture. Now, there are different ways to separate mixtures, like we said. We can separate them physically. Like in the case of a salad, you can just uh, pick out the tomatoes or the cucumbers. You can separate it just with your fingers or some other physical means. But sometimes we use other methods. Distillation is a method that we can use. And distillation is when we take different substances and we separate them based upon the different boiling points they have. So for example, if we have water mixed with salt and it's all been dissolved, well, you don't want to drink that just by itself. So what you can do is you can distill that solution. You can boil that solution and the water is going to boil away and become steam. And then you can collect that steam and recondense it using something called a condensing tube. And then you have essentially condensed steam, which we call distilled water. So that's a method to separate a mixture as well. Chromatography, this is where we take a long column usually, and we inject a solution in there, and the different substances, the different components of that solution, fall through the column at different rates. And so one substance might fall through the column very quickly. The second substance might fall through the column much more slowly. So we have different ways to separate mixtures. Now, if you want to summarize all this, here we have a visual organizer so we can classify all matter, essentially. We have everything that's matter up here at the top, and we can classify that into either pure substances or mixtures. And there are two types of pure substances. We have elements and we have compounds. And likewise, there are two types of mixtures, heterogeneous and homogeneous, which we usually call solutions. So I hope you learned something about how to classify matter here. Let's practice. So let's see if it's an element, a compound, or a mixture. So the first example is nickel. Well, if you know anything about the periodic table, you know that that's an element, isn't it? It's one of those elements that's up there on the table. It has a symbol. Its symbol is Ni. How about a sandwich? Well, that's a mixture, isn't it? It's a heterogeneous mixture, too, because you can see the different parts of the sandwich with the naked eye. Sodium fluoride. Well, we have two elements that are chemically fused together into that one substance. So that is a compound, isn't it? How about orange juice? That's a mixture. There is no chemical symbol OJ on the periodic table, is there? It's a mixture of various substances. There's some water in there. There's probably some citric acid. There's some vitamin C, uh, sugar, you know, different substances in that orange juice. Caffeine is a drug, isn't it? So that's going to be a compound. Lithium. That's on the periodic table, so it is an element. Bronze. Now, this is a tougher one. This is a mixture. And specifically, bronze is an alloy, which means it's actually a homogeneous mixture. It has the same composition all the way through. Alloys, and you've probably heard of some of these before, like bronze or uh, brass or pewter or something like that. These are actually solutions made of solids. So you might wonder, how do you make a solution from solids? We have to melt them together. And so bronze is a good example of an actual homogeneous mixture. Finally, we have a cell phone. Well, that's obviously a mixture, isn't it? And it has all kinds of different substances in there. Probably a, a, a computer chip made of silicon. Who knows what else is in there? But that's a good example of a heterogeneous mixture. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, please smash that thumbs up button. I hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.